Good morning and welcome to the Little Forest Baptist Church 2021 Reverend Aubrey Jackson Scholarship Program. It is my honor and privilege to present to you and to others to introduce the MC for today, the Mistress of Ceremonies, my lovely wife, the Deaconess Roger Lee Harbison. When asked by me to her of her, what should I say about her? She said, just keep it short and keep it simple. But I can tell you, she is a, wom a woman of honor and dignity. And I'm so proud to be her husband. And just so you know, 11, 10 years, 11 months, and two weeks. God bless her. Uh, so I present to you and to others, I introduce none other, Deaconess Roger Lee Louise Harbison. Thank you, sweetie, for that warm introduction. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for our program. And we pray that God will bless your hearts today. We will start our service this morning with the introduction of graduates by Deaconess India Dozier. The graduates is the Berseria Julian and Trinity Sabari. Opening selection will be by the Little Forest Baptist Church Music Ministry. We'll have scripture by Sister Christina Robinson and prayer by Brother Chase Sabari. In that order, thank you. Good morning and welcome to our annual scholarship day. I want to introduce you to our candidates. Today, we have two candidates who have graduated from high school. Bazaria Julian is the daughter of Bernard Julian and Tasha Noel and trustee and Deaconess Powell's granddaughter. She is a member of the Jericho Church. She graduated from Caroline High School with a grade point average of 3.0. Bizarre's aspiration is to enter the field of medicine. Our next candidate is Trinity Sabari. Trinity Sabari is a daughter of Wally and Sandia Sabari. She is an active member of the New Haven United Methodist Church. Trinity graduated from Somerset College Preparatory College with an advanced degree for her GPA of 3.469. She has received honors and accolades from the National Honor Society, National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives, and various other organizations. Trinity will attend Stetson University and major in political science. Her ultimate goal is to become an attorney. We celebrate and continue to encourage our scholarship recipients. Ladies, well done. Started out to see salvation. Search it till I found the pain. I'm 
The scripture reading by Sister Christina Robinson and prayer by Brother Chase Savari. Good morning. So today's scripture it will be coming from Corinthians 3.23. And whatever you do, do it heartily, heartily as to the Lord and not to men. And then from 2 Timothy 3, verse 3, chapter 3, verse uh, 16 and 17, all scripture is God spoketh and is useful for instruction and for convention or correction and for the training of righteousness so that men may complete and fully equipped for a very, every good work. May the Lord have a blessing with the scripture. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I ask that you please bow your heads so we may pray. My Heavenly Father God, thank you for bringing us here today. Thank you for fellowship. Thank you for love. Thank you for friendship, Lord. Thank you for good people, Lord. Thank you for all the, the elders who have put this on for the graduates. Thank you for their hard work and their efforts, Lord. I pray that your word stays close to them, Lord. I pray that as they've grown up in the church, that they learn, they stay to their ways and not straight. Lord, I pray that you keep them covered, keep them protected, and keep them guided, Lord. Guide them whenever they need it, Lord. Guide the elders whenever they need it so that we, we elders and that the, the younger kids may coexist and may work together for the benefit of your work, Lord, that we may further your word, Lord. I pray that you keep us all protected. In your name I pray for your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that heartfelt prayer, Brother Sabari and Sister Christina for uh, reading the scripture reading this morning and Sister Dozier. We will now continue the service this morning with a scholarship appreciation and history um, purpose by Deaconess India Dozier. We'll also have a special presentation by Dr. Gloria F. Jackson. And then we'll have the offering and offertory prayer by Trustee Robinson. 
and then another selection by the Little Forest Baptist Church Music Ministry. Our scholarship appreciation is a thank you to the scholarship committee. I want to thank Reverend Dozier and Deacon Jesse Cofield for thoughts, prayers, and editing. I'd also like to thank Pastor because he edits too. I'd like to thank Trustee Gloria Greenhow because she was one of the original inspirations for this. And I'd like to thank Dr. Gloria Jackson, who is the wife of Pastor Aubrey Jackson, who is also a supporter mm -hmm. of Little Forest. And now for the history and purpose of the Aubrey Jackson Memorial Scholarship Fund. The Reverend Aubrey Jackson Memorial Scholarship Fund was established in 1999. The scholarship was formed from a recommendation to the joint board sponsored by Deaconess Jean Bell, trustee Gloria Greenhow, and sister Marian Hines. The recommendation was accepted by the joint board and approved in the quarterly church meeting. The scholarship is named for our former pastor, the late Reverend Aubrey Jackson, who was the sixth pastor of Little Forest Baptist Church for 23 years. He was married to our former first lady, Dr. Gloria Jackson. This scholarship honors the service of Pastor Jackson and his years of commitment to our youth. He is remembered for the way he reached out to the youth with kindness and wisdom. He taught us that we had a responsibility as a church family to encourage, support, and educate our young people. He repeatedly reminded us of the importance of providing learning opportunities for our children. He took great pleasure during church services to recognize the youth for success in school and for the work they did for the Lord. We remember yesterday, but realize that we are still blessed to continue encouraging and recognizing the achievements of our youth by awarding these scholarships today. To date, we have given approximately 35 scholarships to deserving students. Good morning. Give an honor to God, to Pastor Sneed, Dr. Farmer, all other clergy that are assembled this morning and to the members and friends of Little Forest Baptist Church. Congratulations to the 2021 graduates. It is my pleasure at this time to present to Little Forest $100 from Macedonia Baptist Church in Flint Hill, Virginia, and $300 from my sister, and brother-in-law, Brenda and Herman Lewis, and $1,000 from me for a total of $1,400 to be presented to the scholarship committee and to go in that fund. These funds that I'm speaking of, they have already been given to trustee Marshall and is in the church treasure. So we will use these to further help our youth. May God bless you. Good morning. Good morning to Little Forest Baptist Church members, friends, and those who are joining us via satellite. It is giving time, and there are so many ways to give back to God what he has given unto you. But to give to Little Forest Baptist Church, you can give by mobile to download the free Giveify app and search Little Forest Baptist Church or go to the http giveify.com give now uh, to Little Forest Baptist Church. You can also give by PayPal to Little Forest Baptist Church at gmail.com. You can go by cash app to dollar sign Little Forest Baptist Church 2255 for or you can mail it to Little Forest Baptist Church, 54 Little Forest Church Road, Stafford, Virginia, 2254. It says in Deuteronomy, the purpose of tithing is to teach you to always put God first in your lives. And if I was to look at it and go back behind with Genesis 28, 22, it says of all that you give me and me is God, I will give you a tenth. May you bow your 
head in prayer, please. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we come to you to give back to what you have given unto us for the building of your kingdom, that what we give, we give you from our hearts, and we thank you. Amen. Spirit and why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and home? Amen, amen. His eye is on the sparrow and he's watching over me. I just want to congratulate all our graduates and just to let just encourage them that they should keep focused and always keep God first in everything that they do and every decision that they make. We'll continue the service with um, the introduction to the preacher for the day, Pastor Nelson Sneed. And the word of the day, the sermon will be coming from Reverend Dr. George Farmer, Jr. We'll have the invitation for Christian discipleship by Reverend Robert Dozier and remarks by Dr. Gloria Jackson and remarks by Pastor Nelson Sneed and then the benediction by Reverend Dr. George Farmer, Jr. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. I pray that you have been walking with him this week. I am indeed so thankful that the hand of God 
is with us on this journey. And he shows himself to those who are looking to him, leaning and depending on him. Our God is worthy of worship, not just on Sunday, but every day. And I'm so grateful for him. Let me, um, by way of introduction, let just a couple of things before I introduce our preacher before this morning. Let me thank Dr. Jackson for altering her schedule to be with us on today. We are so appreciative uh, of her, uh, Dr. Gloria Jackson. We thank you uh, for your continual love in this family, for this family. Uh, God bless you and we are here for you as well. Also, we had asked each family uh, to contribute a, a minimum of $100 on toward the scholarship, uh, be a blessing to our young people uh, in, in honor of our former pastor here. And so I'm gonna say to for the month of June, if you have not given uh, during the month of June, let's make sure that um, we give and contribute uh, to this scholarship uh, fund. I am uh, honored that we have uh, my brother with us today uh, and I pray that uh, any members from um, Olive Branch, we thank you for joining us as well. Uh, I'm not gonna read the entire bio, but I will read some of it because some of you may not uh, know him, uh, but he is known. He is definitely known uh, within the gates and I'm grateful for our relationship. Um, Dr. Farmer completed 33 years of federal service, all in the intelligent community. Uh, he received numerous awards, including the Distinguished Intelligent Medal, the highest non-combat uh, medal awarded by the CIA. Uh, he preached his first sermon on January the 3rd, 1988, and has preached regularly since that time at churches throughout the local area. He was a Dane, a Baptist minister on uh, May 20th, 1990, and has served as pastor of Olive Branch Baptist Church Hey, Margaret, Virginia, since April 1999. He also serves as a member of the Vice President uh, Board of the Hampton Ministers Conference and was a speaker on the Senior Statesman Panel at the 2006 conference. Uh, he's a serious student. He uh, completed his formal academic studies at Howard University School of Divinity, earning an MDiv and a, a DM degrees. His DM thesis was declared the outstanding DM project for his graduating class of 2002. Um, in November 2007, he was recognized as a distinguished alumni of Howard University School of Divinity at their annual convocation banquet. He also serves as a special consultant to the Dean of the School of Divinity from 1995 to 2007. In 2017, Howard School of Divinity honored him with their Leadership Excellence in Ministry Award. Uh, Dr. Farmer has been married to his wife, Loretta, for over 58 years. They have two children, David and Don, four grandchildren, all of whom have attended college, with one earning her BA in psychology and a second one, uh, a BA in speech patholo uh, pathology. He also currently serves uh, as our chair in the Northern Virginia Baptist Association Social and Civic um, Commission. He serves as the chair and is doing a marvelous job. He, uh, as um, chair, he serves with um, VOICE, which is a community advocacy group uh, involved in uh, helping many in our local communities. And I thank him for his voice there on behalf of the Northern Virginia Baptist Association. Uh, he's a brother beloved and uh, we are very grateful that he could serve with us on today. And with that, I yield to my brother. Uh, God bless you as God leads you and bring in us the word of God. Thank you, Pastor Sneed. Uh, it, it is indeed an honor and an humbling privilege to be invited to speak at your church. And I would be remiss if I did not immediately acknowledge a couple of people who are members of your church and who are in attendance today. First, I would like to, uh, shall we say, reinforce your thanks to Dr. Gloria Jackson. 
I have a personal reason for doing that because she was instrumental in helping my daughter begin a career in the Manassas City Schools, which is now flourishing. And, and you did mention that my uh, two granddaughters have completed college. And I'm happy to say that, uh, again, as an indirect result of Dr. Jackson's work, they are now teachers in the Manassas City School System. Uh, so I'm, I'm overly appreciative of, of Dr. Jackson and her work. And I remember many years back to uh, her husband as well. I'm, I must also say hello to a uh, man who's become my good friend, Deacon Arrington. Uh, he can tell you where our relationship began and how it flourishes. And I also note, uh, as I mentioned uh, in our preparation for the service, it's a joy for me to see Reverend and Mrs. Dozier, who are also old acquaintances and friends from um, the church that's just a half a mile from my house. It's again a privilege to speak to your scholars. I'm a strong, strong proponent of education and of preparing oneself for the careers of today. So without any further ado, I would like to get into the sermon. I, I tend to be kind of, shall we say, project focused. So if you would allow me, I would like to provide you a scriptural base from which I hope to speak to the topic, give up your best to the master. The scripture that I would encourage you to refer to is 2 Timothy, the second chapter, the 15th and 16th verses. Reading from the King James Version, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Now, as is my habit at my home church, I would like to read this from a contemporary English translation as well, the Masses translation by Eugene Peterson. It reads this way, concentrate on doing your best for God. Work you won't be ashamed of, laying out the truth plain and simple. Stay clear of pious talk that is only talk. Words are not mere words, you know, if they're not backed up by a godly life. So again, I emphasize to you, give of your best to the master. May we pray. Father, we thank you for bringing us here today to bring your word to your people. And Lord, we pray now that you will use me, my tongue, my mouth, my voice, to give the words that you want your people to receive in the manner in which you want them to receive it. And remove me from the equation, but when we hear it, let us all be incited, inspired, and motivated to do your word and not just hear it. Otherwise, we will deceive ourselves. We ask these things, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Question. Are you aware of the revolution that took place some years ago? And this particular revolution, while widespread, was really focused in the black communities of this country because it was prevalent wherever black folk lived, in the depths of the city ghettos or way out in the country. And not to mention being nestled in the affluent suburbs as well. And this revolution was against intelligence and education. For some ungodly reason, too many of our black brothers and sisters have decided that being intelligent, getting good grades, and the quality education that comes with those good grades, working hard and forging a solid career that establishes one not only to survive in this racist world, but also to prosper and prevail 
is something to be shunned, belittled, and criticized. Now we've heard, and some of us have even uttered, the derogatory slanders directed against those of us who have aspired to and worked hard to excel academically. You've heard these statements. Those who use good grammar are accused of talking white. Those who excel academically are said to be trying to be white. And many who went to college and obtained well-paying positions, which allowed them to move out of the slums and the ghettos and the rural farms, were attacked for abandoning their, their brothers and their sisters. Now, I could go on with this, but that's not what I want to do today, because I already know you know about that because it has not always been this way. But sadly, it is close to the norm among African-Americans in today's world. We glorify mediocrity. We glorify the hip hop culture, all too often highlighting the vulgar side of it instead of encouraging those who use this style of communication to try to reach our younger generation because they have a message of hope, but we seldom get to hear about that because we hear the other side. And saddest of all, and I say this with great chagrin, is the reality that the anti-intellectual movement seems to find its strongest support in the church. Yes, you heard me. I said the black church is the place where intelligence and education, particularly among preachers, often is a primary source of criticism instead of praise and is oft times born of jealousy and envy. And unfortunately, this attitude towards academic competence and intellectual strength often flows throughout the entire congregation, even in churches where members are well-educated. And such an attitude, the attitude that says, I don't want preachers who've been to the seminary because they have had their faith distorted by the academics. That kind of approach creates a challenge for our younger generation because they now must determine how to recognize value and the principles and the practices that lead to success while they're surrounded by people, both peers and adults, who seem to dismiss the power of a solid education. Unfortunately, they have to admit, eventually choose between two opposing approaches to living in this world. The ones who say the world of human intellect and will, or the ones who say, follow the word of God. And the sad side is those who say follow the word of God, which is the way they should be going, are quietly undermining their ability to access the tools of proper education. So what I, what I really believe our youth need is they need to hear words of encouragement, words that I, if I can quote, one of our fellow pastors, Dr. Keith Savage, who says, those who refuse to drink from the well of knowledge will die in, of thirst in the desert of ignorance. But it seems there are others shouting in their ears, others giving them a different message, telling them that they're wasting their time on getting, quote, education because they'll never get a chance to use it effectively. And they'll be forced to leave their brothers and sisters behind who have not availed themselves of that. But what our youth really need to hear, if I can go to the Bible, is what Paul wrote to Timothy when he encouraged him to step out and become a leader in the local church. And Paul told Timothy, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed at rightly dividing the word of truth. Because if and when our youth heed this sage advice, then they will be able to give of their best to the master. Now let you in on the secret. 
This secret is the secret of success. And it starts with being the best at what you do and ensuring that potential beneficiaries of your excellence know what you can do. That's almost that simple. Unless you decide to excel at the work you choose for your life's commitment, then you will never control your own destiny. And the stepping stones towards excellence in your chosen field begin at the earliest stages of learning. Now, I hope that those of you who are parents and that those of you who are young and have parents know that the parents should be instilling in you the belief that you can do anything you're willing to work to achieve. Now, I know mine did, and it made all the difference in the world for me. In fact, one of the most important things you can learn early in life is that knowledge is power, especially when you learn how to obtain and then use that knowledge. And let me tell you this. If you do not have a solid education as the key foundational element of your quest for success, then you have doomed yourself to have your dreams deferred. Yes, your dreams will be deferred. They will be delayed, maybe even decimated and destroyed if you do not build them up on the foundation of a good education. Let me borrow the words of the great poet Langston Hughes and ask you, what happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy loaf. Or does it explode? Does it explode? Does a dream go up in smoke? And the question we need to answer today is how do you keep your dream from being destroyed? How do you turn the potential disappointment and despair that can result from the frustration this life brings and, and then convert it into satisfaction and the sense of fulfillment that can come from achieving your dream and then looking back upon the accomplishments of your hard work and your dedication and knowing that it came from you working through the power of God. And where do you go to get the principles for success? Can they be found in the volumes of books residing in the great libraries of the world? Well, conventional wisdom, and that is the wisdom of humankind, tells us that those libraries and the instructors, the professors, the teachers who use them can educate us and they become critical sources for us. However, even as I encourage you to use these sources and their resources, let me stop right here and let me warn you that wisdom and let me say this carefully, wisdom comes directly and only from God. Now Solomon emphasized this point, telling us the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. But still we need to recognize that understanding, which comes with instruction, will not just drop out of the sky. No, this kind of wisdom and the wisdom that is in all those great books and all those lectures given by teachers and professors had a common source. Even though sometimes I know that those professors and teachers would not like to admit it because I'm here to tell you that that common source was, is, and always will be God and God's word. So if you wanna benefit from that knowledge, that can be turned into wisdom, there's some straightforward things you have to do. You must study. You must work hard. I have got a little interruption in the background. You must listen to those who have gone on before you. Did you hear that? Listen to the teachers who have already done what you aspire to achieve. That is if you have any hopes of succeeding in anything 
as long as you can confirm that the source of their knowledge, the source of their success came through God and his prophet, whether they knew it or not. And I emphasize that whether they do it or not, because we human beings delude ourselves into thinking we are smarter than God. And that's why I insist that formal education is an absolute necessity today. The days when a person could work with his hands or count on a job in some manufacturing plant are essentially gone. In today's world, a high school diploma is no longer the minimum credential you have to get to get a start on promising career. Now it takes more. And that is just the stark reality. But if I can go back to the Bible, Solomon already warned us. He said, there's a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So you have to be careful about who teaches you and what they teach. Now, my parents often quoted me an old aphorism as a warning. They said, don't let the green grass fool you. And I offer the same warning to you today. The flashy lifestyle of the successful musicians and the dazzling athletes can impress you. In fact, it can impress you into thinking you can duplicate their feet that, and that getting an education will only get in your way as you try to aspire to the riches and glamorous lives that they live. But don't let the green grass fool you. And the instant success that we read of and hear of with young entrepreneurs who have dropped out of educational programs and become multimillionaires by starting some awesomely successful technical business or other kind of business, that can intrigue you, especially if you think you have skills in those arenas. But please don't let the green grass fool you because I could go on and give you other examples, but I want you to remember that lightning, the success of a musician, the success of an athlete, the success of an entrepreneur seldom strikes twice. And the truth of the matter is lightning instant success seldom strikes at all. So don't let the green grass fool you. Now I could go on, but I want you to remember that this lightning that doesn't strike fast is the truth. And the truth is lightning is just that. The odds of it affecting you in your life are virtually zero. So you need to do what Paul told Timothy to do. Study to show yourself approved unto God. And then you can become a workman who needeth not be ashamed because you will have educated yourself and then you can rightly divide the word of truth. And if you do this, then you can give of your best to the master and your future will be guaranteed. In other words, humanity's approach to education seems to be working. But think about it. Is it? I just told you high school diplomas don't mean much anymore. And sadly, even some college degrees won't open the doors they used to open. But without them, a person's prospects border between slim and none. And if you've chosen to walk away from getting a quality education, you may well find yourself bemoaning your faith, probably using the words of Paul Lawrence Dunbar, who said, a crust of bread and a corner to sleep in, a minute to laugh, but an hour to weep in, a pint of joy for a peck of trouble, and never the last, but the moans come double, and that is life. And I don't want you to have to live that kind of life. Now, I may sound as though I'm contradicting myself when I say this, but I want you to see that today's so-called experts are really misleading you because they're providing a distorted concept of what real wisdom is. Because they're trying to provide you what they, I would call worldly wisdom. 
And let me tell you this, worldly wisdom looks good on the surface, but there's no substance beneath it. And worldly wisdom sounds good, but it's based on a lie. And that's the lie that the serpent told Eve. And he said, you will be wise and you'll be like God. I told you earlier, too many people in the world think they're smarter than God. But worldly wisdom never works very long. It does not last because there is no solid foundation to it. So allow me to refer you to an excerpt from one of those documents in the libraries considered part of the classics of English literature. And I want you to hear a statement from a father to a son that sounds on the surface as though it comes straight from the scriptures. Because that's why worldly wisdom is so seductive. It sounds so good. And this advice could have come out of the book of Proverbs. And indeed, I suspect that the author, William Shakespeare, did lift the essence of the message from the word of God. I don't became slightly distorted. And those slight distortions are what get you in trouble when you try to go solely by the wisdom of the world. And let me just read what this father said. His name, if you want to know, was Polonius, speaking to his son Horatio, who was the best friend of Prince Hamlet, out of the play Hamlet. And his father said, in these precepts, in thy memory, look for thy character because you need to give your thought no tongue nor any unproportioned thought his act. In other words, you must think before you speak and don't speak until you have thought. But he said, be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Beware of entrance into a quarrel. But if you're in one, fight so that the opposed may beware of thee in the future. And give every man thine ear, but few thy voice. Take every man's censure, criticism, but you reserve your judgment. And as costly a habit as you can afford, buy it, but not expressed in fancy, rich, or gaudy fashion, because the apparel often proclaims the man. We say it today, the clothes make the man. And neither a borrower nor a lender be for off the loan loses both itself and the friend. But this above all, to thine own self be true. And it must follow as night follows day that thou can be false to no man. And that's straight out of Hamlet, Act 1, Scene 3. It's impressive. It sounded good, didn't it? But as impressive as those words of wisdom sound, the man who spoke them was dead shortly after he spoke them because he didn't follow his own advice. And that induces me to remind you that this work, great work of literature, this play, Hamlet, was really the tragic account of how men and women mess up their lives while thinking they know what they're doing. But nonetheless, the words that were uttered by the key character in this tra tragedy, that is Hamlet, tell us why we really need to be wary of human wisdom. Because Hamlet, as he was talking to a, a friend, said these words, what a piece of work is a man. How noble in reason, how infinite in faculty, in form and moving, how express and admirable. In action, how like an angel. In apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world, the paragon of animals. But then he closed by saying, and yet to me, what is this quintessence? of dust. He knew it was all vanity. He knew it was all a charade. But we know there's a better way. 
And the word of God provides that way. Solomon set the example when he declared wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Because then you can exalt her and she shall promote you. And she shall bring you to honor when you embrace her. So you must pair up your worldly knowledge, which you have to get anyway, with the spiritual insights that come only from God. And remember this, when you meld your quest for formal education with a diligent search of the spiritual wisdom that can come to you only from developing a personal relationship with God, then you'll have success. And this special relationship with God will keep you on the right path. It will assure you of success. It will also ensure that you can avoid the dangerous pitfalls of life that lie in wait around every corner, eager to trap you. As much as I've spoken so far, sounds like bad news. But I have some good news for you too. You can avoid all these problems if you make the right decisions. And the critical decision you need to make is to concentrate on doing your best for God. Work that you won't be ashamed of laying out the truth in plain and simple terms. Because when you follow that advice, that is the only way you're going to be able to give of your best to the master. Well, I'm about ready to shut up and I started to say go home, but I am home, so I, I'll just say turn off the computer. Because I really suspect I've already worn out my welcome. But before I go, let me leave you with a couple of thoughts to consider. First, stay clear of pious talk that is only talk. Because words are not mere words, you know. In fact, if they're not backed up by a godly life, you don't need to hear them. My mother used to tell me talk is cheap. It takes money to buy groceries. And what she was really telling me was, and, and this is what I hope I'm getting across to you is maybe, in fact, can I borrow from the words of the apostle James? Because he wrote, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Because what you need to consider is he was telling you, you should realize that nobody will pay any attention to what you say when they can see what you're doing. I should repeat that, shouldn't I? Nobody will pay any attention to what you say because they can see what you're doing. So your deeds must match your stated creed. Let that digest for a second. Because while you're digesting that, I've got another thing to tell you. And I hope you hold on to this because when you want to give the best to the master, you must recognize that when you do that, you'll never have to back down to anyone. So you must study. And your studies must be steeped in God's word. And wrap God's word around the, shall I say, worldly intelligence that you get from school. And then when you've gained sufficient understanding about how you should behave and then you act upon what you know and understand, then you will find, as Isaiah wrote, no weapon formed against you shall, shall prosper. And then you can be able to fulfill the words of a proverb that comes out of Africa. And it says, knowledge is like a garden. If it is not cultivated, it cannot be harvested. So your life and your successes can be noteworthy when you have chosen to give of your best to the master. When you have chosen to give of the strength of your youth when you have decided to throw your soul's fresh glowing ardor into the battle for truth. And why? Because Jesus has set the example. Dauntless was he, young and brave. So 
So give him your loyal devotion. Give him the best that you have. And I repeat, give up your best to the master. Give him the strength of your youth. Clad in salvation's full ardor. You can join in the battle for truth. And when you make this commitment and, and, and success becomes your reward and as it will, and people look to you as a giant and they say, how did you do it? Your answer should be short. It should be sweet. You may just choose the words of the poet Robert Frost and tell them, two roads diverged in the woods. One towards the world, one towards God. And I, I took the one less traveled by. I went with God. And that has made all the difference. Thank you for your time. Well, Pastor Farmer, I know you from the past, and I certainly was not disappointed. There was a lot. In fact, that was a fire hose full of information and encouragement. And if you missed the encouragement part, I think I can paraphrase it shortly to say that Dr. Farmer was telling us that education is important, but God is important first, and they go hand in hand. I remember, and this is by way of invitation in my comments portion, and I'll get out of the way. I remember the rebellion that Dr. Farmer talked about, but before that, I'm old enough to say, say, and you can see by my gray hair, that my parents, my grandparents, and my great-grandfather was a freed slave who was educated. But my parents told me that you need two things to succeed in the world. And I heard Dr. Farmer say it. First, you need God. And second, you need a good education. That was before the rebellion. I would say that we need to study and we need to be a part of God and it has to be the big and most part of our lives. And if you don't know Jesus as your savior, this is the invitation part. I would invite you to take in all of the words that we just heard from Pastor Farmer. Take in all of those words, digest them. And if you want to know more and you're not saved and you want to know more, go to Little Forest's website, littleforestbaptistchurch.org, and look for the contact part. And it will tell you how to contact us and someone will get in touch with you. We don't want you to be without Jesus Christ. You need him in your life first. But now back to the comments part, we don't want you to be without a good education because a good education is important. And the last thing that I'll say uh, again is Dr. Farmer said, be aware, a lot of times, those who are in the education will try to tell you that God does not exist. But I will go back to say, you must study and work to show yourself approved. So be aware that God should be at the center of your life. Jesus Christ should be at the center of your life and hold on to that. And as you hold on to that, keep studying, keep working to excel, but excel knowing that everything that we have comes from a gift of God. Thank you, Dr. Farmer. Thank you for what you have given us today. I do appreciate it. Dr. Farmer, thank you for that outstanding message. 
that you brought to us this morning. As always, you always leave food for thought and sow great seeds wherever you go. Again, congratulations to the graduates. And I say to you, go into this world and do good. Trust God and follow him in all of your endeavors. For if it had not been for the Lord on your side, where would you be today? I always say to the graduates each year, never forget from where you have come from. And don't forget about your parents who have sacrificed so much to get you where you are. There will be times as you travel in this life that you will have to make decisions. You will say and wonder, shall I follow the world or shall I follow God? I say to you that the world will only bring you disaster. But if you follow and obey God, God will bring blessings to you. God knows best. So whatever you do, follow him. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I say again, follow God's plan and you will have a successful future. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Be, before I um, uh, make my remarks, I'm going to ask that Trustee Marsha would come and, uh, and then come back to me, if you don't mind. I understand Sister Tolbert is not on. Uh, so Trustee Marsha, would you uh, share with us the announcement at this time? Good afternoon, Lula Forest. The announcements are as follow. On Monday, June the 7th at 7.30 p.m., we will have our LFBC weekly call to prayer and praise. We do ask that all would join us in praying for our brothers and sisters in Haiti. On Wednesday, June the 9th at 7.30 p.m., we have prayer and Bible study over the Zoom platform. We are in the book of Genesis, chapter 30. Pastor Roy Thomas will be leading the study. We look forward to all joining us using the same inf information we use for Sunday worship service. On Sunday, June 13th at 11 a.m., we will have our annual Season Saints Day. Join us in, in encouraging all Season Saints. Our own Reverend Ro Robert Dozier will bring the word of God. On Friday, June the 18th at 7 p.m., the Northern Virginia Baptist Association virtual call to action kickoff event for a two-day symposium. Pastor Terry K. Anderson, a Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church in Houston, Texas, will be the keynote speaker. And on Saturday, June the 19th at 10 a.m., the Northern Virginia Baptist Association, Moving Beyond the Dream, collaborative panel discussion and a collective community thrust to address the various iniquities facing our community at large. Have a blessed day. Amen, amen, thank you. Let me say thank you to the Lord first and foremost. We had Dr. Palmer scheduled last year and um, we did not uh, have the program last year, but we are grateful and that for the faithfulness of God uh, that he would use him on this year to challenge our hearts. And my brother, we are thankful uh, for you um, helping us to process all that you put before us today. Um, and I, when I think about uh, academic excellence, um, I think about Dr. King who pursued the academics and yet was able to communicate and meet the common man wherever uh, he or she was. And so uh, I'm just grateful the more God, the more we um, attain, the better we can minister.
for the glory of God and, uh, and, and be even more effective. So my brother, we said thank you um, for the Lord using you on this day. To the scholarship committee um, for bringing this all together, we, we thank you uh, for your continuous labor in that arena. Um, to the parents and grandparents of our graduates, um, we say thank you. Uh, it, it's amazing how this thing starts when they're very little. Uh, I look at our grandchildren. I'm a, I am amazed at two and three, uh, their ability, their aptitude to learn, to hold on to things. And it's not just our grandchildren, it's any child that we choose to pull into how they're able to excel, even at that age. And so I say to um, let us as parents and grandparents continue to pour into our children. Um, to Dr. Jackson, uh, to, um, excuse me for using your first name, Brendan and Herman, your family. We are so grateful to the Flint Hill family for your continual support. Uh, we appreciate you uh, so into the lives of all of the recipients who come forth year after year. You consistently give and we do say thank you. Uh, to the college students and our graduates and, and all the young people, uh, we love you. We care about you. And, uh, and that's why we don't just touch you the first year. We touch you each year as you go through uh, because of our love and concern for you. If you're not on the list for Thursday, pastor send a word of encouragement out each Thursday to the young adults. If you're not on that list, please let me know. Uh, get your uh, cell phone to me and we, we send out a, a text message to those individuals with a devotional. And uh, it's been very encouraging to me. I got a message back this week from one of the young people. And so it's a two way. So I appreciate you responding back and letting me know that the messages are making a difference in your life. Uh, we, we love you, we care about you. Uh, to our worship leader, did not our worship leader do a marvelous job today. Her husband introduced her in a very fine way and we thank you for leading us to our media team. Uh, thank you for your consistent work behind the scenes each and every week. Um, I do ask you to mark your calendars, and Dr. Farmer can feel free to mention this in his closing, but the 18th, uh, Dr. Terry Anderson will be with us. Um, it's a virtual service, so it's a Friday night, so please join us uh, as for this kickoff as we look at how we can make a difference, and Dr. Farmer is leading that effort. Uh, uh, Dr. Farmer and Dr. Winters, our, our Social Civics Commission and our Educational Commission is working together. And with that, I'm going to yield back to Dr. Palmer. My brother, we say thank you for the Lord using you among us this day. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Snee. Uh, I should, as I prepare to provide benediction, remind you of something that I'm sure you already know. You have a superb leader as your pastor. I have experienced him now for several years as he has moved up as a vice moderator and, and is in line to become the moderators uh, on the next uh, transition. He brings to you both wisdom and good judgment. And when I say that wisdom should always be the result of good judgment and bring good judgment, but he lives it and he does it and he doesn't raise his voice, but the impact is always significant. I, I would, just to amplify uh, for a moment, uh, his announcement concerning the uh, event coming on the 18th and the 19th, it's going to be the kickoff of a major push that the Northern Virginia Baptist Association is going to embark upon to make an impact in the way we bring change to this country and making sure that God is at the forefront of these many movements that are taking place. And I'm talking about the, the movements about police brutality, about the Black Lives Matters, et cetera. Uh, it's important for us to remind ourselves and I'll borrow from the words of uh, the great preacher, Dr. Gardner Taylor, that we do not want to risk making the mistake we made in the early 1970s where we stopped counting on God to bring us what we needed and we raised our fists in protest except there was nothing in our fists. 
nothing to back up our protest. We don't want to fall into that trap again. And what we'll be doing, uh, as you heard, we'll kick it off on Friday night with the great speaker, Reverend Terry Anderson, and we will make step one and a half on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock when we will assemble a cross-generational panel to address these issues that are so prominent and so dangerous right now. And our goal is to come up with what amount to viable steps in a forward direction where we collaborate and generate action and not just words. Now, having said that, if all hearts and minds are clear, let us pray and we'll ask for God to uh, dismiss us with blessing words of benediction. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the time that we have had together and we pray, Lord, that much of what we have experienced will be transferable to the lives that we live as we go out into this world around us. Give us the strength to stand. Give us the wisdom to seek your guidance first and then the courage to act upon that guidance. We ask these things, Father, and all others, in the name of Jesus, we can all say amen and go in peace. Amen. You can unmute.